Today on 5 Minutes of Cloud, we're going to talk about NoOps. So there's a new concept that, that people have been talking about. Well, they claim it's new. I don't think it's any different than anything else that's come along in, in quite a while. But the concept is uh, no ops. It's this idea that uh, application operators, those that used to consider themselves DevOps uh, developers, uh, no longer have to think about the operations component. I think this is a simplification that's a little on the extreme side. Uh, in reality, uh, no ops is more about the fact that uh, developers really never wanted to manage infrastructure. Now, if you roll back the clock a little bit, a couple of years, five, maybe even 10 years, uh, one of the benefits that <clears throat> the cloud set of services, specifically things like uh, Amazon Web Services and the EC2 Elastic, Comple uh, Elastic Compute Service provided, uh, was the ability for a developer to manage the infrastructure that their application ran on top of uh, and do that in a programmatic fashion. This was a huge leap forward for many developers, and that's why I think the concept of DevOps had gained such a huge following and continues to have such a huge following because the developers really get much more control over their environments the resources that they're using and how the pieces all fit together. But the, the reality, I think, sets in after a while that now the developers are having to, yes, they, they can describe their infrastructure as code, but they really have to manage end-to-end -end that infrastructure as code concept. And that means that they have to deal with the platform level security issues. What is my operating system and its an embedded uh, security relationship look like? I have to deal with network and network security issues. I have to deal with storage and storage security issues. There's a lot that one would have to deal with and as a small startup, you know, 5, 10, 15, maybe even 100 person startup, maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay, okay that everybody sort of has a piece or an understanding of the entire system. But I think the reality is that as the system scales, you really want the application focused developers to focus on applications and those that are more interested in keeping the system running and stable to focus on the system itself. And I think this really breaks the environment and the organization into two different pieces. We have those folks that really want to focus on the application and there is still operations associated with that. It doesn't go away. Even if we look at the platform as a service type offerings, uh, things like the, I think the, the quintessential model to this is Heroku, and then the, the sort of additional models that have come out that are uh, potentially open source platforms like OpenShift uh, or, or Cloud Foundry are, are two uh, really prominent examples. These tools really sort of change the application developer operations interaction. It's not that you're not operating the application deployment or even interacting with the scale of your application, um, but you're sort of giving a lot of that control over to some other service. I think this is nowhere more prevalent today than in the interest in use of Kubernetes as a container management environment. The reason I think it's so popular is because it gives you the visibility of how your individual resources are working and it potentially gives you access even to managing things like how your database works or what database you're using, giving you access to all kinds of data structures and data tools, um, how your applications themselves interact uh, with tools like the service mesh components with Istio, you have some really fine grained control and how you scale your application up and down. Uh, and these are the sorts of tools that the application developers today are starting to use to continue to operate their environment, even though they're doing this on top of a platform, and that platform now is Kubernetes. Um, so the folks that talk about no ops are really talking about the fact that if I'm using Kubernetes, I'm not really focused so much on the underlying infrastructure anymore. I'm not thinking about what operating system I'm running. I'm not thinking about what storage service I'm deploying and how I'm scaling and managing and backing that environment up or what network inter interfaces and SDN I'd have decided to use to actually implement that infrastructure for the most part. There are still some DevOps practitioners that are using Kubernetes and are managing Kubernetes as just another piece of their application stack. Um, and that's a viable model, but I think it's, it, it, it sort of breaks the model a little bit in that I do believe there is a push towards what I would call, maybe it's more appropriate to think of it as GitOps or, um, or infrastructure ops. Uh, I kind of like the idea that Google had with uh, systems reliability engineering, uh, thinking about how do you make sure that your system platform is stable, reliable, functional, upgradable, etc., and yet let the application developers focus on how their application operates on top of that platform. 
I think the two have to have, have some level of overlap. But if we do it right, I think the DevOps developer focuses on their application and operations specific to their application, which is really where I think we would want them focused because we're going to get the best value out of the functions that they build that way. And the operators themselves, the infrastructure operators, can focus on making sure the platform is as stable as possible. In both cases, automation is key. You have to have automation to continue to expand and enhance these systems. But overall, we can start to break out application operations, and the DevOps cycle can focus there, to operations development, which is SRE is another, another term for that class of function, or systems reliability engineer, and let those two communities work together to find a decent boundary, which seems to be Kubernetes today, um, and, and yet also let the system scale and be more flexible and functional. This has been Robert Starmer bringing you another episode of Five Minutes of Cloud. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you've gotten to this point, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, click the little bell if you're watching this on YouTube so that you'll actually get notified of the next session, uh, the, the next uh, episode that we, we release for you. Um, we also have a newsletter. Uh, and that newsletter, we, we release uh, content that actually you can't get anywhere else at the moment, although we probably will eventually release it sometime later. But if you really want timely information about cloud services, you really should sign up for our newsletter as well. You can get that at our website, cumul.us. Uh, we look forward to having you join us on this cloud journey.